with Jesus' joy in your heart, with a next level shout, welcome with me, Pastor Bola G. Idowu, the senior pastor of Avestas Christian Center International. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big shout of praise. I'm sure we can do better. Let's give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Just before we have our seat, I'm going to ask them to sing a song. Please don't sit down yet. And it's good that it's Young Minister's Retreat, you know. So it's good to be there. I want to really thank, um, for me, it's an honor. This is my second time. This is my second time preaching this year in this auditorium. The first one was at the Pastors Conference, the Redeemed Pastors Conference, the second one. And, I, you know, to be on the altar that, that the GO stands on. It's a deep honor for me. It's a deep honor for me. That the geo is, um, I know for the redeemers, you say it's our father in the Lord, but the truth is, is our father in the Lord, is our patriarch, is our patriarch. And I find it a deep honor. Hallelujah. I also want to appreciate our host in the conference. I, I would nickname, call him Pastor Fireman in the place of Pastor Daniel and his lovely wife. You know, um, most of the time, when it comes to prayer, I'm the one that will tell people that, okay, let's go and pray. But one of the few times I met him, he was the one that said, Pastor, if you want to pray, I'm available, just call me. Nobody has ever given me that invitation. I'm always the one that is always challenging people, let's go and pray. And that shows, and the truth is that, a lot, you know, I was talking to a pastor friend of mine just last week, and we're talking about trying to do some, um, some time of prayer. And I said, it would be surprise you how many people, even pastors, cannot really pray. It's just unfortunate. If you ask people to pray for one hour, after one hour, you will feel it. But the reason why is that, and I always say this, if you want to learn how to pray, you're going to learn by teachings and precepts. Teachings will help you to be effective in prayer. Precept, which is example, will learn, will teach you the act of agonization in prayer. You know, and Pastor Daniel, it's really nice to be able to. See. Praise the Lord. And uh, what will I say, Pastor Isaac? Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Isaac, beautiful. What will I say? When I was putting my message together today, there's something I heard him say on social media about himself, and I put it on example. I wrote it in my notebook. So when I came here and I saw him, I said, how can I preach about him and he's sitting down here? This is not fair. And it's just really nice. It's really nice to have you here. Praise the Lord. We have, because I know I'm going to be blessed, we brought several of our pastors. We have um, a youth church um, called The Fifth. We brought all of our fifth pastors' leaders. Our pastor from Harvest is about the pastor Julius is also here. And from our campus fellowship, I wanted to come and see all the great things that Pastor Daniel has been sharing with me. So we're here to learn. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you know the song, I Know You Are Here, Precious Holy Spirit? Nathaniel sang it. Yeah. You, you, I don't know who knows it. Yeah. If you don't, just tell me. I can, we can use another song. If you don't mind, can you lift up a right hand, please, towards heaven? I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. I know oh. you are here, here to bring revival. Oh, yes. 
I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here, you are here in your power. I know you are here, sweet Holy Spirit. I know you are here, here in your glory. I know you are Oh yes. Precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here. You are here in your glory. You are here, Lord. I know you are here. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here. Here in your glory. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. Valina Quatis Katune. Helikonski Vrinon Proske Vaish to Stai. Husali Pakum in a man into Sansa. Reni Mankantuli Practice Date. Helikumana Vrissus Kipe Toshke Vai. Sinanti perutai, perutai monkatos, perutai monkatos. He mind to kali vriki kumombo sine punonte kilon trados kilatala. Shkovariman vika rosine palete. For thus said the spirit of grace and supplication. For you didn't bring yourself, I brought you. And at this time. I'm equipping you for the work which is ahead, says the spirit of grace and supplication. For the encounters I've started, which you are having in private and in the public meetings. And some of you are wondering, what does this mean? For it will unfold, says the spirit of grace. It will unfold, says the spirit of grace, and there will be more. For there will be more, there will be more, there will be more. And for some of you, it will be a clear distinction of what you should do in ministry. For there are some of you I've called out for fear I've not allowed you. But in this place, there will be an impartation of faith and boldness for you to step out. And the miraculous which you have always prayed for will begin to flow out through your ministry. Says the spirit of grace and supplication. Somebody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Please, you can have your seats. Oh, praise the Lord. The glory of the Lord is in this place. You know, when I was preparing to come, I customary, I will write a lot. By the way I preach, I write a lot of notes. And my notes are ready. And the Lord just told me, don't be so carried away with your notes. Just pour out into the people. Yeah, he said, just pour out into the people. And I remembered, um, you know, I'm not so blessed like Pastor Daniel and all the other pastors that have behind them, they have behind them generations or in their family pastors that are there. I'm the first pastor in my own family. Like, you know, my father was not, by the time I got born again, my dad and my mom were never born again and all of that thing. Glory to God. Why am I saying this? So, for a lot of my Christian journey, I had to learn. I remember 1992, no, 94, 94, 95. It was a, there's a man of God is late now, um, Maurice Cerullo. He had invited um, Robert Leadon to come and preach. And Robert Leadon climbed the stage and Robert Leadon just said, I can't even remember what they said, but what thing I remember that stood out to me was, was prophesying. And it was saying that, go, go. He said, where are the young people? He said, go, 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 go. For that's the word of the Spirit. And that took with me for a long time. So in this meeting, it's really, I'm grateful for what has been done because a lot has been shared already. 
I want you to turn your Bibles into 1 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 16. And my teaching is going to center around encounters. My teachings are going to center around encounters. My teachings are going to center around encounters. Ex experiencing personal encounter. And I know that's why you've come. You know, you know, the truth is that just watching everybody here is nostalgia for me. Nostalgia for me because I remember I just have memories. I have loads of memories as I talk to you right now. You know, I, I have loads of memories. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There, no matter how far you have gone, there are always deeper dimensions. No matter how far you have gone, there are always deeper dimensions. The Bible says in Revelations, and the Spirit called me Tida. He said, come up Tida. There's always a come up moment. There's all, there are always deeper dimensions. When the children of Israel were going to cross the Red Sea, they went into the Red Sea and walked on dry ground in the Red Sea and came out. And everybody sought out and said, wow, this is the glory of God. That was a dimension. When Elijah and Elisha mounted on the screen, you know what they did? They walked through the water. They used their garment to part the water of Jordan and they walked through the water. That was another dimension. When Jesus got on the scene, he didn't go down into the water. He didn't go through the water. He walked on the water. That was another dimension. There are always dimensions. And, and the reason I'm saying so to you is that no matter how deep your Christian experience is, God is calling you to a deeper place. No matter what you have done for the Lord, the Lord is calling you to a deeper place. The Lord is calling you to a deeper place. And why are encounters very important? Because I'm talking about dimensions now. So I'm grateful that you can do this, but there's a higher calling. One of the Oh, oh, wow. One of the blessings that you can have from this meeting that you can keep forever is the blessing of hunger. Where you stay in a place, you, you know, the hunger for God is such, the more he fuels you, the more you're hungry. It's the natural hunger that you eat and you get filled. Spiritual hunger, the more you are filled, the more what you are hungry. It's like the songwriter says, he said, the, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. He says, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. It's like the more I pray, the more I want to pray. And my prayer is this, that there will never come to a time in your life where your stories of impact and encounter will be in the past, they will be in the future. You know, not too long ago, I met some people who went to university together. And, you know, you know, I've been doing ministries in school. And they, they were like, ah, those days when we were in University of Lagos. And I laughed. I said, all the memory of, I said, I'm grateful for what happened when I was a student. But it's not compared to what is happening right now. Because the best of God is in the future. And let me tell you something. Some of you might feel here and say, well, I'm not qualified Nobody knows me. How will I put it in ministry? You are listening to someone like me. You know, the more, let me tell you a story that is very personal. If you're not very close to me, you will not know this story. I remember when I told my mom I had the call of God. Oh my God. My mother physically beat me up. Not so, my mother as an adult physically beat me up. She told me, he said, if I knew this was the useless thing you become, he said, I would have aborted you as a child. True life story. He said, out of everything to be in the world, my mother is a, is, she goes to church. Oh. He said, out of everything to be in the world, you want to be a pastor. He said, I know that you are lazy. He's not as if, you know, because some of you here, and my mother said, ah, you know, she, I'm Yoruba, so she said in Yoruba, ah, she, ah, you, I wish in my mind I can see my mother again, you know, and she was vibrating from her toe. But what am I saying? She said, ah, so out of my children, you're the one that will not succeed. Ah, he said, I will have known. Look, the one they say they will not succeed. Look at the person here now. I'm saying that story to encourage someone here that maybe people have looked down on you because I, I, 
because you have the call of God or they've not accepted because you have the call of God, don't worry. The same stones which the builder rejected, the same stone will become what? The head of the corner. I, I remember I got this job in the bank. It was in the bank then, Fountain Trust Bank. It's, the bank is no Fountain Trust Bank. And I didn't know because my mother was involved in the bank and I didn't know how to tell them that I'm not going to be collecting salary. I'm going to do ministry. It, it got so bad that so when I said no to the job, my mother said, okay, what do you do now? I, 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 did, I, did, I didn't want to lie, but it was difficult to also tell the truth. Have you been there before? When you don't want to lie, but it's got to tell the truth. I said, mommy, okay, I'm into human development. What am I doing right now? Is this not human development? <laughs> Glory to God. Why I encounters, but I, I, I said that to say something. Why are encounters important? So that in the day of trouble, you are, there's something to hold on to. I could not tell myself I did not hear the call. It's okay to believe now that I have the call. But when there was nothing, I could not tell myself. He said, oh King Agrippa, we cannot be disobedient to the heavenly vision. He said, there are things that our hands have handled, that our eyes have seen, that our mouths have tasted of this word of life. We cannot deny it. Encounters. Experiencing personal encounters through prayers. First Timothy chapter 1 in verse 18 and 19. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 and 19. The Bible says this. And this charge I commit unto you son Timothy... According to the prophecy which went ahead of you, that by them you might war a good warfare. You know, this can be confusing. Because I thought that when God gives you prophecy, prophecy would automatically happen. I don't know if that's what you think. I thought if God told you something that because God said so, prophecy would automatically happen. No, sir. Prophecy does not automatically happen. Prophecy are enforced by prayer. Prophecies don't automatically happen. Prophecies are enforced by prayer. The Bible says in the book of Daniel that Daniel saw by books that the days of the captivity of Israel was accomplished, but they were still in captivity. Prophecy don't happen just like that. Prophecy are enforced by prayer. I'm going to give you a simple example. Just imagine that I sat down here and Pastor Daniel gives me a check. The check is for 1 million naira or 25 million naira. He gives me a check. I take the check. And when I take the check, I take the check. This is the check. And I keep it in my book. And after, one, after six months, will I have the money? Will I have the money? But he has given me a check. Even though he gave me a check, if I don't go to the bank to enforce the payment, I will not have the value of the check. I know that there's something that God has told you about your future. But you have to be in the place where you stand up and enforce what God has said. So you enforce prophecy by staying in the place of prayer. Glory to God. And this is why many Pentecostal charismatic have issues. Because you keep on hearing, say, oh, pastor, I'm confused. But God told me this, but God told me that. I said, I know God told you, but it's time to enforce what God told you in prayer. It's time to enforce what God told you in prayer. And that's why, that's why in, in, in our teachings of encounters, one of the first things you have to do is to take responsibility for your own encounter. And it's by you saying, Lord, I want an encounter. Someone comes to the meeting and said, you know, he says, if the Lord will touch me, yeah. If he will not touch me, yeah. Anyone is okay, ah. Anyone cannot be okay. I didn't come here to play. All that, you know, so, 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 you know, when I sat here, what I remember was when I used to, I mean, I, I used to, when I was quite young, go for large meetings. And in those meetings, I would pray. I, I would say, Lord, I would say, Lord, I know there are millions here, but I don't know about them. I came for myself. So if 
if you're going to have an encounter, you're going to take responsibility for your encounter. Life, see, your life is not equal to your potential. Your life is equal to what you've taken responsibility for. Every car, every car should be, even the smallest car should be able to do 180,000 kilometers per hour. Every car should be able to do that. But not very few cars drive beyond 100 kilometers per hour. The reason why is that it's not the potential of the car. It's, the, it's what is the driver that determines how far it goes. If you want an encounter, you must desire it. You must go for it. You must go for it. There's something you are seeking for. There's something you are longing for. There's something you are thirsting for. There's something you are praying for. I was in the secondary school, and I think about SS year four, SS one. And uh, I'd been the leader in fellowship for a long time. And I was just so concerned. I was in secondary school, so think of the age, probably about 12 or 13 years old, 12 or 13 years old. <sighs> and I was so concerned that a lot of my classmates were not born again. And you'll not believe it. I said, Lord, and if you were so concerned and God had helped you, there are some books you read. If you read any book by E.N. Bound, you are in spiritual trouble. If you read books by Leonard Ravenin, you are in trouble. If you read Why the Viva Tarries, you can't read that book and not cry. Ah, Leonard Ravenin said that. He said, Why the Viva Tarries? Because the altar is lacking people. He said, The altar is lacking amen. He said, he said, he said There's too much. The altar is lacking amen. He said, There are too many dry eyes. He said, That's why. He said, There are too many dry eyes. So I said, Lord, okay, that's it. So I started fasting. The 21st day, my parents came to carry me because from the boarding school, I was vomiting blood. I mean, that's not, I'm not asking you to do that. Pastor Daniel, tell them I'm not asking them to do that. But what I'm saying is this. This is what I'm saying. I was desperate. I didn't know better. If it took prayer, that's what I would do. You know what, what my joy is? When I walk around today or travel, and I see all those people I prayed for. I'm a Christian here. I'm a pastor here. And I looked. I said, our prayer never went to waste. But that was because there was someone that took responsibility. When I was about to get to University of Lagos, um, some of you will know the story. Um, in the 90s, there was a lot of cultism in the university. You will not, some of you don't know what cultism is. A lot of cultism in the university. And I remember that they had just killed, they had just killed the Syrian non -gov, um, the Syrian non the student union president. I think they beheaded him or shot him dead. I can't remember the story again. So I was at home watching the television with my parents and my mother and my brother and myself. And we're watching the television. And so NTN, either it was NT or channels, I'm not sure because it's a long time now. So they're now reporting University of Lagos, this and this happened. I had gotten admission. You know, I didn't know, you know, think of who my mother is subconsciously, I just said, Unilag, that's why I've come. For this purpose, was I born? <laughs> I said, Unilag, that's why I've come. For this purpose, was I born? <laughs> my brother, my older brother that was already in university, my older brother told my mom, he said, you better warn your child. He didn't want to bring his dead body back. He said, because courtes are not people that you preach to. He said, if you see Curtis, you turn the other way. But I'm the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Darkness does not cover light. Light shines everywhere. Glory to God. Light shines everywhere. I'm the light. Eh? I, I can't help myself. I'm the light of the world. A city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. That's who I am. Praise God. Long and short. We got onto the school. And several hundreds, several hundreds of people on the campus. I, in fact, that was where the name of our ministry started from. Because when I was in school, in my second year, I started a harvester's company, which was a school fellowship. And in two years, this university, we grew from 
two people to like 600 in two years. But not on the testimony. The testimony was that the court members, you know, the court members, people that were giving up on. But the point is, it's, I need you to be able to dream. We, see, we can't be telling stories. This is our generation. We thank God for Daddy Gio. But there are new people God is raising up for. And they are here. You know, the other day I was reading about Lake 98. I was just reading about Lake 98. How there was traffic for 24 or 48 hours. I'm like, but the best of God is in the future. God is raising us up. We can do it. But the, they had the same, listen to me. They, the, the same Holy Ghost that the Jew has. The same Holy Ghost can Hagen have. The same faith they have. The same Bible we have. We can take this thing to the next level. And that's why I said from the beginning, the best of God is not in the past, it's in the future. All I'm asking is for a generation that will arise. Let, let out a generation that will arise. A generation that will refuse to be at ease in Zion. A generation that refuse to be at ease in Zion. So where do we start from? We start by taking responsibility. And how do we start by taking responsibility? You know, when I was a young Christian, the way I grew spiritually was that I learned to pray, to pray for long. That was how I, knew, that was how I grew. How do we take responsibility? You see, just that fundamentally, just learn how to pray. Just learn how to pray for a long time. Because I'm going to tell you what prayer does as, as I begin to go into my teaching. Because just learn how to pray. Because you need this encounter. You need something when life comes against you. You know what you heard, you know what you saw. We, we, we can't have that kind of generation where your friends are going to see Babalawo and you are there. We can't have that kind of generation. We can't have that kind of generation that they've seen you and they have not met man of God. People are asking, where is, you know, like, 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 like A.W. Tozer said, people are saying, where is the God of Elijah? God is saying, where are the Elijahs of the living God? Why? If there's a man that can pray, there's a God that can answer. Are you a prayer or a player? Are you a prayer or what? A player. Because what we're looking for is people that can burn. Hey, the, the Phoenix said, he said, when you burn, the whole world will come and watch you. They say, when you burn, listen to me, you will not even have the results of what you preach. But people can tell that you carry something. Are you hearing me? They can tell you are teaching faith, but they can't see the results of faith. But they can tell that you carry something. That there's oil on your head. There's fire in your bones. There's fire locked up within your bones. Glory to God. So how do we take responsibility? The first thing is by prayer. What does prayer do to you as a person? One of the, and thank you, Lord. One of the things prayer does to you is this. Prayer sharpens your discernment. Let, let, let's read some scripture. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to explain it. If you, hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. If you have a knife that you don't engage very frequently, what will happen to the knife? It will go plant. If you don't engage your spirit frequently in prayer, you will start losing discernment. And let me tell you something. Discernment in the lower form is between good and evil. But that's not really where you need discernment. Discernment in the, you need discernment to know when is right or almost right. Anybody cannot be firm between good and evil. But discernment between what is right and almost right. And the reason why is that as you grow, there will be choices. And some choices will look like God, but God is not in it. The Bible says Elijah had the rocks, but he said, but God was not in it. It sounded like God, but God was not in it. It's unfortunate that the only time Christians want to hear the voice of God 
for younger Christians is when they want to get married. I'm like, when did our Christianity boil down to all this nonsense? One of the fundamental things when you get born again is how to hear the voice of God. You know, so, so when you now want to get married, I say, eh, sorry, Pastor, I don't know, there are three people in my case, I don't know what to marry. Well, like, what have you been listening to all your life? Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So the sermon, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1. I want to read the scripture to you there. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 12. Can we, is it, can we, is it Willis, you can see, can we read together? Is it okay to read together? Oh, you can see it, yeah. Chapter 1, verse 12, not verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Can we read together? Is it possible? One to go, yeah. Okay, well, I, I can't hear what you're reading now. Maybe I should read myself. <laughs> Let me read from verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast what? That means it's possible not to see well. Oh my God. Did you hear me? He said, Thou hast what? Seen well. Let me tell you something, and I, I, let me just take maybe three minutes to, to explain some things about the prophetic and sin to them of the Spirit. Please, everyone look up here. This will help somebody here, and I don't know why God is here, but this will help somebody here. I, I think that one of the biggest problems with this issue of the prophetic and hearing God is this dimension. Number one. One, when it comes to hearing God, there are three stages. There's discerning, there's recognition, and there's perspective or perception. Discerning is, number one, you knowing the Lord is speaking. It's you can discern what the Lord is saying. Now, recognizing is hearing what he's saying. Then the third one, which is a problem, is the perception. What is perception? Perception is that God says something, but how you interpret it. And this is where you have people say someone is a false prophet. What they said did not happen. Most of the time, they saw right, but they interpreted wrong. You must know that, and this is why prophecy needs to be judged. Why? Because no matter how spiritual the prophecy is, it's going to come through a human vessel. And as long as it comes through a human vessel, there is what? The human tendency for contamination in it. I'll give an example. I mean, there are just, there are just a lot of examples I can give. I'll give an example. I will give you the example of sin from a natural scripture. Look at Mary. Mary went to the tomb of Jesus Christ. She went to the tomb of Jesus Christ. She didn't enter. But she saw it was empty. And she said, they've taken my master away. Did you hear that? He said, who took him away? When Peter and John came there, entered. When they saw that, they, what do they call it? The garments were wrapped. They didn't say, who took him away? They said, he had risen. The two of them saw different things at dimension. One said they are taking him away. Perception. Perception was that she saw this and her conclusion was that they are taking him away. Perception is very important. I'll give another example. Look at Peter. Peter had a dream in Acts chapter 10. And in Acts chapter 10, when Peter was dreaming, when Peter, um, Peter dreamed, food was lowered. And he says, don't eat. In our own context today, People will have said, that food is this and this and this. But that's not what happened. After the vision came and said, don't eat, a voice now came to explain to him what he should do. It says, certain men seek thee. Follow them, not forbidding them or asking them questions. Best perception. What I'm saying is this. Sometimes people hear right, but interpreting. Let me give you a practical example. Practical example. As you began to pray, you saw a lady in your vision helping your dream, you come back to life. You say, Father, thank you, I've seen my wife. The person may not be your wife. The person may be a business partner. But because of what you saw in your dream was helping you, you concluded that this is my wife. You go ahead and date her. 
Because it's not the will of God, you guys broke up. Two years after, you begin to apply for a contract in the company. That lady is now the chief procurement officer. And she gets there, remember all the damage you did to her heart and say, I will not give you. You now go back to God in prayer. You say, God, what happened? And God says to you that, look at this. I brought you in contact with her two years ago because of today. I knew that you would need her today. So I brought you in contact two years ago. He said, but because you didn't understand guidance, you went to date who you should what? Who you should befriend. Because you didn't understand what? Guidance. <laughs> Glory to God. You know what I'm saying this? When you talk to the brother, he will say that, ah, but I saw a dream. He saw, but he didn't interpret well. Glory to God. I will give another example. Look, I, I mean, look at the three wise men. They saw the star. They went to Herod's palace. Their interpretation was that if a king was born, he would be in the palace. Was that the interpretation? No, no, no. The star did not show them that the king would be born in the palace. That was the interpretation. They saw the star. They went to the palace. You must be careful, you know. And that's why the Bible says we must judge prophecy. We must what? We must what? Judge prophecy. Why? Because prophecy comes through human containers. There's a tendency for error. Just think about it. They saw a star. But when they saw the star, they said, ah, oh, a king is born. In it must be in what? In Herod's house. So, if they were like you and me, spirit-filled Christian, we said, ah, we came here because we were led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. Your interpretation of what you saw was what brought you here, not the leading. The leading was perfect, but the interpretation of the leading was what? Imperfect. And you know what I'm saying? So, you is this. Major things that, and this is just by the way, major things that get in touch with interpretation. Number one, knowledge. The more ignorant you are, the more it will affect your leading. The more ignorant you are, the more your leading will be affected. Number two, emotions. The more emotional you are, the more leading will be affected. Balaam said that. God said, I should follow them and go and curse Israel. When did God say, is it, because that's what the scripture said. The scripture said, um, it, let's leave that one. Let's just go. Because, I, because, amen. Let's just leave it there. So what does prayer do? Prayer brings clarity. Prayer brings clarity. Can I be honest with you? There's virtually nothing I'm doing today that I did not see as far back as 20 years. The man that can pray will see. The man that cannot pray will be as blind as a bat. The man that cannot pray will be as blind as a bat. You will just be groping through life in darkness. You wonder why things are going on this way. Because you cannot see. Because you cannot see. The, the other, uh, just this week now, um, there's a social media trend and said that I gave a prophecy that someone was going to die and the person died and people wanted to... And I said that, well, it, it's not, it's, number one, it's, it's dead, so you, can, you have to be sensitive. But the prophecy for the Christian is not show off, it's our lifestyle. We are a people of prophecy. Do you know what I'm talking about? So this one that, you know, the word of God is coming, no, no, it's our lifestyle to see. But what makes a Christian see? The, what makes a Christian see is the ability to stay in the place of prayer. Because prayer will increase your discernment. Number two, prayer will help your clarity. So, this is what people do in church. They have a dream, they don't understand, then they go to a pastor. That's not a New Testament concept. You may need to do that as a baby Christian. The way we get clarity is to go back to prayer. The Bible says, Daniel said... The king does not understand his dream. He said, give us some time. We will go and pray. Why couldn't the king pray? Because the king was not of that dispensation. Why? In the place of prayer, what we didn't see where we'll see where. What was not clear will become clear. And that's why I'm teaching this. I'm teaching you to help you understand that prayer increases discernment. But the second thing is that prayer provides clarity. You know what I'm saying? So, some of you, because you are not clear, you have caused, you have caused process delay. Because someone say, Pastor, Pastor, pray for me. Uh, I, I'm delayed when it comes to pregnancy. And when it comes to childbirth, I'm delayed. I, I said, my sister, I should pray for you that you are delayed when it comes to childbirth. Um, I should pray for you that you are delayed when it comes to what? Marriage. Okay. 
My question is this. How do you know you are delayed? He said, I'm 27 and I don't, I'm not married yet. And I have nobody. I said, in God's timetable for your life, when should you be married? He said, I don't know. I said, if you don't know your timetable, how do you know you are delayed? The rich, you know, tell you, ah, poor pastor, my younger sister is 26. She's dating someone. They pick marriage date. All my friends are married. I know all your friends are married, but you guys can be age mates, but not grace mates. Because sometimes, 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 some people want to run ahead of God. And the Bible says, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. Some of you, the prayer you are praying, God is just throwing somewhere. Because there's no delay, it's just process. Let me tell you something, eh? If you are cooking indomie and you are cooking beans, indomie will get done before beans. It's not a matter of delay. What we are cooking is different. Some of you here, what God has in store for you is a beans kind of destiny. Very strong, very strong destiny. Very strong destiny. So extra work is being done. Don't call extra work delay. Understand that process is at work. Glory to God. If they are sharing testimony, say, ah, farabale, farabale. Don't worry. Because God is not, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, things are just coming to my spirit. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Because some of you are like, some of you are like, hey, but God has done for everybody. God has done, what about me? Let me ask you a question. When God multiplied bread and fed the 5,000, did everybody get bread? Yes or no? Yes or no? Did everybody get bread at the same time? What does that mean? Everybody will get bread, but not at the same time. What does that tell me? When I see bread multiplied on row two, three, and four, I say, thank you, Lord. Mine is coming. Because what God does for one, he does for other. He's not a respecter of person. I don't get impatient. I become adventurous in my journey of faith. Listen to me. Everybody will get bread, but not at the same time. I'm not going to fall out of line. I'm going to stay in place. Somebody shout, I believe I receive it. And the reason I'm saying is that some of you are under undue pressure. Under undue pressure. Under undue pressure because things are happening. And you don't understand. Just like when you read the Bible, did you realize that all the women that we so called said they were delayed in childbirth, all of them gave birth to abnormal supernatural children. The reason why is that they were not delayed in childbirth. It was that their child was too special to come at other times like other children. Their child needed to come at a certain season because they were children of destiny. They were meant to mow tomorrow. So I may not be able to marry like my other friends because my own marriage is special. It's a kingdom partnership that will shake the world. I may not be able to step out like other people. Mine is special. It's a kingdom prayer that will shake the world. Glory to God. Oh, wow. So what does prayer do? Prayer brings clarity. Prayer gains. So as you pray, you begin to see. What do you see? Number one. You see areas you need to make adjustments. Number two. You see the future. Number three. You see the pattern of God at work in your life. Those are things you begin to see. Those are things you begin to see. Oh, wow. Ah. Oh, wow. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Someone say thank you, Jesus. Everyone needs an encounter. And, and the reason why you need an encounter is this. This is the reason why you need an encounter. Something. How would I explain this? When people argue that there's no God, 
or there are no miracles. You know the honest truth. I don't argue with them. I don't argue with them because based on their experience, that's what they have said. But me, I've seen too much to be able to say that God does things. It was in this same Holy Ghost service, my uncle, not my cousin, not my son, this Holy Ghost service, my uncle, Dr. Ido, he was brought on a wheelchair, this same Holy Ghost service. This was maybe 95. It was in the, I'm not even sure if this auditorium or the old one. Was, is it this one, 95? It will be the old one. That the Jew was ministering. And he said, can they bring all my friends on the wheelchair out? And he, he, he didn't even leave where he was. He prayed and he said, if your faith catches fire, just stand up. My uncle, remember, he's a medical doctor. All of a sudden, my uncle stood up from the wheelchair. So, you know, so when you say miracle does not exist, I understand because you have never seen one. But this is why, you, let me tell you, God uses an encounter to open your mental reasoning. Because there are some dimensions. They, they, when you hear Pastor Daniel pray, preach, eh, you will know that something has happened before. He has seen something. He has tasted something. And is trying to draw in on something. How can me now say that God does not do miracles? This is when I was young. I was younger. I remember I was in, um, in 93. Deep alive at the crusade. Many of you might not know this. The title of the crusade was called Powers of Old. I don't know if you remember it. Powers of Old. And in that crusade, Pastor W.F. Kumi was preaching. And he said, and you know the way it was those days, there's no streaming. If you, are, if you don't attend the major Deep Alive crusade, all you hear is video cassettes. You just hear cassettes. I don't know. Do you, does anybody know that? Oh, wow. Okay, some of you do. Okay, great. So, all we're listening to was cassette, audio cassettes. Some of you don't even know what audio cassette is. Ah, your life is so good. Praise the Lord. Listen to audio cassettes. Then Baskumi said that today, nobody should close their eyes. He said today is open eye miracle. He said if you are crippled, if you are blind, if you have a hunchback, all of you come, stay in the aisle. Like the aisle, you know, stay in the aisle. He said let everybody be looking at you as I pray for you. Ah! In front of me, there was a man that had a hunchback towards his right, right, towards his right back, towards the left. As he prayed, I don't know how it happened. I just saw the guy say, hey, 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 the hunchback has appeared. Everybody was shouting. Me, I could not shout. Tears were falling in my eyes. I said, God, whatever they did to make you use them like this, I'm here. I volunteer. Use me like this. That's why I said you need an you need experiences. If you are not hungry, you have not found what to make you hungry. If you are not thirsty, you have not found what to make you thirsty. One of the things, and this is why everybody needs an encounter. You need that thing that will shift you. It will shift you. You. You go for a meeting, you just, after that meeting, I couldn't be the same again. How can you be the same again? Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. How is prayer connected to encounter? Because when prayer starts working, prayer will change the men that pray themselves. The Bible says, as Jesus Christ prayed, guess what happened? Beyond other things, the Bible says, the countenance, his own countenance became altered. The place of prayer is the place of altering. There are some things that you need to shed off. There are some things you need to bring back up again. The place of prayer is the place of altering. The place of prayer is that place where you'll be altered. You'll be altered. You'll be altered. See, when, when you have those moments, you know, you will know that it was at this place God took something from me. It was at this place something entered into me. 
He says, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance, it became altered. The fashion of his countenance, it became altered. The fashion of his countenance, it became altered. Something happened to him to pray. Listen to me. Altar is the place where people are altered. You want to see people? Altar is the place where people are altered. The longer you stay on the altar, the more you'll be altered. Stay on the altar, you'll be altered forever. We're in a generation where a lot, a lot of people see a lot on social media. You know, in this, in this generation, press is democratized. Everybody can tell you what they think. That was not how it was when we grew up. You had to watch television or be, buy a newspaper. But guess what right now? Right now, people talk a lot what we need to do what we need now is people that do a lot. There are a lot of talkers be among the doers. Learn to attempt big things for the Lord. Learn to what? Attempt big things for the Lord. Attempt to raise the dead in his name. Attempt to plant churches in countries that are very difficult. Attempt to win souls more than ever before. Encounters. Encounters through prayer. Encounters through prayer. How do you learn how to pray? Look for someone that can pray. Follow them. Simple instruction. How do you learn how to pray? I, I can tell you how I learned to pray. I, I learned to pray from three, four people. The first, name, the first person's name was Peter. His name is Peter Wotoki. He currently lives in Germany. I'm still in touch with him. I remember when we were in the secondary school. He was the one that shocked me. He was just, maybe, he was just about 14 years old. But Peter used to pray in secondary school. Peter would pray like five hours every day. He used to wake up at 5 a.m. and pray from 5 to 7. Then we'll come back from, from, from lectures at 2 and eat lunch. Then from 2 to 4, Peter will pray. Then we'll come back from prep and Peter will pray another hour. And I said, whatever this guy had, I wanted it. I, I wanted it. I, I, the reason why is that hunger is contagious. So I hope you know that. And that's why you must be careful about staying around people that don't have hunger. Because they can use their lack of hunger to kill your own hunger. Every time, ah, 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 ah. Every time, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Oh, tea, calm down. I don't want to kill Jesus Christ. That's the way they kill your hunger. Your own is too much. That's the way they kill your hunger. You need people that say, ah, my brother, should we pray? Is it three to five hours? Let's travel. Peter challenged me to pray. Then the other guy was, um, was a CAC prophet. We used to call him Brother Olu. He happened to be my parents' tenant. And he would tell me that they are fasting for this amount of days. And they will pray 9 a.m. to 12. They will take a three-hour break. They will pray three hours, go and pray for three hours, then pray three hours, then go and pray on three hours, and they will do like that around the clock. I told him, I said, sir, me too. I don't know if I can survive, but let me try. So he said, tomorrow, the first prayer schedule is 9 a.m. I should come. We got there together. I, I you know, when you want to pray long, is even when you are praying for 30 minutes. I just noticed that when we got to the prayer, everybody took a sitting, kneeling posture. I, I stood, I was shocked. Ah, you know, <laughs> after, about, after about one hour, ah, my energy was going down. I just saw those, those guys could pray. Ah, they would just kneel down. Michael Saipa Leba Rea Pakotia Pato Kaspe. Leto my kashada Jesus Ramano Kuribasa. That's how they pray. And three hours of that Mande Roseta. Then when we finished the prayer, this was not where they finished me. They will not say, Sir, what did you see? They say, Ah. <laughs> when 
they say, what did you see? The best, the first person said, ah, as we prayed, the person gave a prophecy, saw a vision. They, you know, just tell him, pa, 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 pa. Hey. So as the thing was coming near me, I was saying, if they ask me, what did I see? What will I say I've seen? This is how you learn to pray. You expose yourself to an environment that challenge you. But all of a sudden, I'm not even sure when, my spiritual eyes became awakened. And all of a sudden, I could see the visions of the Spirit. I could see into the realm of the Spirit. I could discern what the Lord was saying. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, I could discern what the Lord was saying. How do you, how do you program yourself for encounter prayer and being in those as association, right? those, those places. There's a lot the Lord will do. There's a lot the Lord can do through you. There's a lot the Lord can do through you. He says we're able ministers of the New Testament. That's who we are. But the question is that how far can you go? There's a call from our world. Europe needs revival. The North America needs revival. A lot of African nations need revival. Even in Nigeria, there are pockets of places where we need penetration of the gospel of God. And like Paul, our talk is not in, it's not in mere enticing words of men's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and the power. He said that your faith may not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of the Lord. They want to know that the Jesus we serve can do exactly what he says. If there's a man that can believe the Bible, if there's a man that can do these things, they will follow. And you are the answer to their call. They're calling you from nations. Nations everywhere. Nations everywhere. Sometimes I'm privileged to be in countries or with people that Christianity is not famous and You'll be surprised how they respond to the power of God because that's all. They don't even know what it is. And this is our time. But before we can tell them about encounter, we will have experienced encounters. Can we pray? Stand on your feet. Oh, Sunday, lead up by the hush. Stand on your feet, please. If you can use anything, you can use me. Lord, you use a donkey. I'm not a donkey. I'm more than a donkey. Oh, Lord. He says, God that works in us, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. My prayer for you is this, that you will leave this place having contacted the spirit of prayer. You, you will leave this place having contacted. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to me. There's one thing that you are forcing yourself to pray. That's a dimension. When you catch the spirit of prayer, he will take over you. He will pull you. He will pull you. You will plan to pray for 30 minutes, three hours without God. Then all of a sudden, your spiritual senses will be awakened by the power of God. I want you to pray. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Ask him for a fresh fire. Ask him, ask him, ask him. Ask him, ask him, ask him. Ask him for deeper encounters. Ask him for deeper dimensions in the school of prayer. Lord, I don't want to graduate from the school of prayer. I want to go deeper in this thing. Every 
Tumanski prompara te e practica pashkivara e brinke panto brinde man palesina e printe keis kumenam prante e brunti kas kuski poja akara paros keva ria te kabaya katela o ria skeja skevina prante se le practica o le practico pros e braki man pate e le practico protomante si le pranti kombri na mantai e kiro prusi kiri bate shulu kame ne pranti kala ura bade kura bashala ume ne kapete le kumbra tia e manta kira ura bakote e pate ko i panda koma uma na ke e pana ba si le ke bala badia. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear you say, believe in amen? Please listen to me. Many of you have been asking yourself that. I really want to move in the prophetic. What's happening? I've been praying for this. Just remember, God is not a busybody. He only talks and shows people that he knows we'll do something about it. So if you want God to show you something or talk to you about something, you need to have proven that you will take responsibility in prayer. God is not a gossip that will talk to somebody else about somebody else. He only talks to someone that he knows will make a difference. And Father, we thank you. That there will be, oh man, take a school, you will raise a generation from this place, oh God. That will turn the world upside down, oh God. I'm praying that people will have a fresh encounters. I'm praying that the spirit of prayer will mightily prevail. It will mightily prevail. It will mightily prevail. The spirit of prayer will mightily prevail. There will be intercession mightily prevail. It will be mightily prevail. It will mightily prevail in our closet, in our churches. The spirit of intercession and prayer will mightily prevail. It will mightily prevail. It will mightily prevail. Let the spirit of God take a hold of us to will and to do. Oh God, you cause us to burn like never before. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray.